Hi, this is Minister Pat Holmes, and welcome back to Pat's Place. Did you know that the Bible says in Hebrews 10 and 31, it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of a living God? At the King's Table Bible Study, we have been talking about worshiping warriors. The worshiping warriors were sent out to bring down the enemies of the cross. When I think about Goliath in the Old Testament, we're all familiar with that story. Goliath was an enemy to the move of God, to the kingdom of God, to the chosen people of God, to the authority of God. David, as a worshiping warrior, met Goliath in a public place, in a public setting, and brought him down publicly. God knows how to put his enemy under feet. As we go to the days of Moses, do you remember Korah, his cousin, withstood him? Korah wanted to be in the authority of the priesthood, even though he was already serving in the tabernacle. Moses spoke to him and said, do you think it's a light thing what you're already doing? Do you want the priesthood also? So finally, God was angry. He told Moses to tell Korah to come out in a public setting and all that pertained to Korah. The Bible specifically brings out the fact that Korah had sons and he had daughters and all the men that were associated with Korah in the rebellion. So we remember the story, the ground opened up, Korah and all that pertained to him fell alive down into the pit. God judges his enemies of the cross. Then when we look back also, do you remember the story of Joshua? Joshua the warrior when he sent the warriors out? The warriors came back and they brought into the camp Satan satanic items. They brought in that Babylonian robe. And if you have studied, the people of Babylon were devil worshippers. They had already been given instructions as what not to bring back into the camp. But anyway, as a matter of fact, they weren't to bring anything back. But there was Achan, and he hid that robe in his tent as well as silver and well as gold. And finally, Joshua found the family, found the tent. He had them come out into a public place, a public setting. And you remember, they were stoned to death. God does not play with the enemies of the cross. And what can we say about Athaliah, the daughter of Jezebel? Athaliah so desired to be on the throne as queen. When she found out her son, the king, had died in war, she rushed in and thought she killed all seven of her grandchildren, but one grandchild escaped, thank God. Her daughter uh, came in and rescued that one grandson. Anyway, she sat on that throne for six years, I'm sure thinking she was secure in her position. But you know what happened in the seventh year? The priests and all those that were working with him came up with a strategy from the Holy Ghost. Long story short, they crowned that seven-year-old boy king. Athaliah walked in and cried treason. Isn't it amazing she would say treason and she had murdered six of her own grandbabies to get that position. But you know what happened? God had a plan. He instructed that priest and those working with him bring her down. She was brought down in a public setting with the sword. As we fast forward and go to her mom, Jezebel, you remember Jezebel? Nobody names their child Jezebel. A spirit of Jezebel is certainly still operating in the church. Jezebel has to do with idolatry, has to do with witchcraft, has to do with sorcery, fornication, and control. The spirit of Jezebel can operate in a man as well as in a woman. So here was Jezebel, the Bible says she stirred up Ahab, the king, and together they amalgamized and worked much wickedness in the kingdom of God. God is a God of mercy. He sent the prophet Elijah to speak wisdom to Ahab on several occasions, but they insisted on walking in their rebellion. It mattered not who spoke to them. And finally the day came when God had to bring down the enemies of the cross. You remember Jezebel in particular? He sent his servant, King Jehu, to bring her down. And I love reading that story because the watchmen on the wall saw Jehu coming, and they said he rides like Jehu. That reminds me of a man on an assignment that wasn't going to let anything stop him. When God gives you an assignment, fulfill that assignment. So we know the story. Jehu wrote up and said, who's on the Lord's side? Jezebel painted her face and straightened her attire, thinking she could seduce the servant of God. But this servant was different. And he had the eunuchs push her out the window. And you know the story. The horses tread upon her. And all that was left were 
were her hands. God does not play with the enemies of the cross. This is why we have to be sure that we're walking in submission to the voice of the Lord and not operating in our own self-will. Many have moved by the spirit of Jezebel, assuming that they're being moved by the spirit of the Lord. As we fast forward to the New Testament, we're dealing with the enemies of the cross, the enemies of the move of God. Do you remember the Apostle Paul out preaching one day to the public? And there was a man that was a sorcerer in the crowd. There was also a deputy of the city that this sorcerer was with. As the Apostle Paul preached, the sorcerer tried to hinder the deputy from hearing the gospel. The Bible says Paul locked eyes on him. We're talking about worshiping warriors that know they're on assignment. And Paul released blindness upon that sorcerer for a season until he would humble himself. There's another story in the New Testament where the Apostle Paul turned a fornicating man, turned his flesh over to be buffeted, or the Bible says destroyed flesh, destroyed by Satan so that his spirit could be saved. I just wanted to give you some New Testament scriptures to go along with the Old Testament. What am I saying? God will publicly bring down the enemies of the cross. And I don't want to end one teaching without reminding you, Jesus has already paid it all. We don't have to operate under any of these spirits that I taught on earlier. The spirit of Athaliah, the spirit of Achan, the spirit of Jezebel, uh, the spirit of Elimus that withstood Paul. Jesus has already paid the price. The spirit of the living God can dwell inside of us and lead us in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. The Lord paid the price for sin and death on the old rugged cross. But those that decide to remain an enemy of the cross will receive the judgment of the Most High God. But you don't have to be in that number. Right now, repeat after me. Lord Jesus, I realize I'm a sinner and I need a Savior. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Be my Savior. Forgive me of my sins. Wash me in your blood and be my Lord. And if today you've already asked Jesus in and yet you're operating in rebellion, rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. So you need to repent for your rebellion. Just say a prayer, Lord God, I realize I've been operating in rebellion. I'm operating after the spirit of Jezebel. I'm after operating after the spirit of Achan who stole. Lord, I ask you to purge me, cleanse me, break the yokes of deception off me, deliver me from evil. Forgive me, Lord God. I desire to be your son or to be your daughter and to walk in holiness and righteousness before you. That's all you have to say or something similar to that from your heart. God will break the yokes off you. Don't we serve a good God? He said hell was made for Satan and then those angels that fell with Satan. It wasn't made for us, the children of God. So I bless you today. I want to encourage you to join us at the King's Table Bible Study. We meet on Tuesdays at 1130, also on Sunday afternoons at 6 p.m. And again, we're dealing this month with the subject of worshiping warriors. God bless you until we meet again.